If you watched the new Apple keynote where they presented the new iOS 17, you're most likely a bit disappointed. They didn't show a lot of new features and changes for this software update, but there are actually a ton more that they didn't talk about that we're going to talk about on this video. We actually have here a list of more than 130 new features and changes that you will find on iOS 17. Now, before we get into all that, just want to ask you guys for a really quick favor. Most of you guys that watch my videos are not yet subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy the videos and you want to see more, please make sure to subscribe. It really helps out a lot. And we're starting with a new standby mode. First of all, the good news, it works on all iOS 17 devices. We were expecting this to be exclusive to the iPhone 14 Pro. It's not, it will work on other devices as well. And it has three different modes. One that features two different widgets. You can add two different stacks. And of course you can customize these. So just like you do with basically with widgets on the home screen, you can do the same here. You go to the edit mode, you can edit them add new widgets or remove the old ones and of course you can enable smart rotate and you can also enable or disable suggestions from siri once you're done here you can go here back and you can swipe and go to a new mode which will feature a clock and also your pictures but you will also have a third mode now the third mode is this one right here where it shows you different designs with different clocks and you can change between them you can see we have a few different ones and what you can do is also customize these. So all of these are customizable. You tap that button right there. You can switch between different colors and of course different themes for any of these. Once you're satisfied with it, you tap done and you're good to go. And you can see how cool that looks on your device. The new standby mode will work with live activities as well. So if you're on the standby mode and you have a live activity going on, it will show it right here on the screen. And if I tap it, it will expand. So right now I have a timer and you can see I have a big timer here. And of course the controls for this live activity. And the night mode looks absolutely great. You can see this red color, which were turned on when your device is on landscape mode, charging is on the standby mode. And of course you're on a dark environment, which is really amazing. And this is how you get notifications when your device is on the standby mode. You can see right here, it will first of all, initially show a big icon of the app from where it got the notification right on the middle of the screen. And then it will move to the side. Moving on to the lock screen, we have new wallpapers. So as we swipe here, we have more planners than before. You can see we have a lot more here. And we also have here different like patterns that you can create here. You can actually customize these. Any of these are customizable. You go on them and you can just swipe like this and just like create different patterns that you can use. And some of these like these ones right here also offer a dark and a light mode. So if you tap on three dots right there, you can choose the appearance. You can choose whether you want that to be automatic or of course, just follow the pattern in which the device is. If it's on the light mode, it will be light. On the dark mode, they will be dark. And one of the coolest thing, the new motion wallpapers, which give you this cool effect once you unlock or just wake up the screen of your device. Now to do this, all you have to do is apply a live picture from your camera roll to the lock screen and you're good to go. Another one right here, which I love, the wallpapers that you can actually create using portrait photos from your device so you can customize these and make them look really really cool so you can see this one right here this is the stock photo i can go ahead and switch here add different backgrounds to that photo different effects and you can see how cool this actually looks now once you have added that you can tap here and switch between those colors in the background there just make it your own and make it look really really different you can add a solid background right here and you can enable or disable the depth effect when customizing your wallpapers, you will have now a new option here to change the size of the clock right there at the top. Unfortunately, it doesn't change the size of the date right there. Now, if you want to go back to the, to the like stock size of that clock, you just tap once more there and it will actually reset the size of that clock just like that. Now, going back here, we'll have the option to use light or dark mode, just like on the previous wallpapers. And then you will have the button here where you can enable or disable the depth effect. On the home screen, we have a really cool thing. 
interactive widgets. Finally, widgets are interactive and I cannot wait to see what devs would do with this. It will be really, really amazing. So you can see right here, we have a contacts one. You can add a button for messages and actually a button for a phone call, which is really cool. There are also new widgets. Safari finally got widgets on iOS 17. We have one that will show your reading list. Now, if you have one, it will show it right there with a screenshot in the back with a screenshot of the website. If you have multiple of those, it will show them on the list. We have a new one for shortcuts where you can add a couple of small shortcuts. And then we have a small widget for the files app, which shows four different files, the recent files, or you can choose any other folder you want by just editing the widget here. And then of course you can tap on any of these files and it will actually open the file that you tap. And there are a lot of other changes to the widgets on the home screen. A lot of them have been updated. You can see the stocks one has been updated. The calendar one has been updated. A lot of different widgets have been updated, some with interactive features, some not. Hopefully more to come on the next few betas. We also have here a pretty cool feature when you just try to connect your AirPods to your iPhone and your iPhone is on a dark mode. Finally, it shows the pop up on a dark mode, which is really, really cool. Also, when you turn on one of your focus modes, now it actually shows it on the dynamic island. It doesn't work when you do it from the control center, but if I do it from like the settings or somewhere else, it will show it on the dynamic island. This is a new pop-up that you will see on the home screen of your iOS 17 device. Once you open an app that had access to your all entire library for a long time, it will show you this pop-up right here and it shows what that app has access to and you can go ahead and limit the access from here. Now the same will happen with calendars as well. So if you had an app have access to your calendars for a long time, it will show you a similar screen like screen here, like a pop-up. It will show you every detail to what different calendars that app has access to. And of course, give you the option to limit that. And now when you're trying to airdrop a file or a photo, it will show you right here how you appear on the other phone. So it shows right here the picture and of course your name. There are a few changes here on the screenshot as well. So if I take a screenshot and tap the plus button here at the tools, you will notice that the icons now are on the right side and we have on the left side the text. There are a few different options as well. We have now a button there for stickers. We can go ahead and add different stickers and also a button to add shapes. Now, previously shapes used to be right here. Now they are their own section. And if you tap right here, you will see a new menu with shapes, which is really, really cool. Now shapes are really interesting here. If I add a shape, I will have a few different tools here. I can change the color of the shape from there. I can change here the transparency of the shape and then right here we have the outline so I can change the size of the outline and of course the color as well. Just choose those options from there and you're good to go. Now another thing you have here, if you notice there, there is like a circle with three buttons. If you tap there, you can cut, copy, duplicate, share or delete this shape from the screenshot. And on the markup tools, we have new tools right here. So these used to be on iOS 16.4, I believe some of them, but most of them have been added. We have like three or four different ones that does, didn't appear before on the screenshot tools here. Now they are there and it's pretty cool. Now when you take a screenshot, now you will see a new view here. If I tap on the share button and tap on options, it will show me this new page where it shows the name of the file. Now from here, I can go ahead and just change this to any name I want. Another very welcome change that Apple has done on the home screen is that now when you install an app, it will install on the first blank space that you have on your home screen. So let's say I have a spot clear here. Previously, iOS would just install it on the last page. Now it just fills up that space. And AirDrop has gotten a lot of updates. With AirDrop, now you can name drop your contact with someone else. All you have to do is just bring two iPhones close together and you will switch contacts. Your contact card will show on their phone, theirs on yours, and that's pretty easy to do. You can also bring your devices close to share with AirDrop files and photos and things like that. And also, if you're sharing a file and your iPhones disconnect, basically they just move further apart, 
that that will actually continue via the internet so it won't interrupt whatever you're sending it won't be left like that it will still be sent via the internet we have some really cool things on the spotlight search as well so you can see this is a search on spotlight on ios 17 i just searched for wi-fi and now i have here a button which allows me to turn on or off the wi-fi of my device this is really cool and makes it very easy for you to turn off the Wi-Fi completely without having to go to the settings app. Now what you will get here are ton of useful things. Right here we have a suggestion where it shows like create a new note. I can tap on this and actually create a new note right here. And then the toggles I have searched for like the Wi-Fi or this focus right here, I can turn it on from here. So it will be saved and you can see now it shows right there right on the dynamic island and you can see that will be saved until I clear it so I'll basically have their buttons that I need and can use anytime I want. Now search has been improved a lot on the spotlight search with iOS 17 and one cool thing is that it works with a lot of apps pretty good like the files app if I search for files it shows me the files app but it also will show me right here three different recent files from the app. Now the same goes for notes. If I search for notes, you can see it shows me my three recent notes right there. I can go ahead and open the app or open any of those notes. And you can see right here, also it has been redesigned a little. You can see the result here look quite different. So if I search for something, you can see that UI right there, it has changed. And when you search something within an app, it will show the icon as well as it will highlight that part with the color of that icon. Moving on to the control center now, we expected a totally new control center but there are actually very, very little changes on this control center. Hopefully it will be updated on the next few betas. So what we have here is a new button to ping your Apple Watch and a redesign there, small redesign on the now playing controls right there, which looks kind of better in my opinion. It has changed just a bit, probably won't even notice that, but these are the two minor changes on the control center. Now moving on talking about Siri, Siri now can just be invoked simply by saying Siri. You don't have to actually say the hey word at all. And also now you can add commands. So when you invoke Siri, you ask her something, you can ask her another thing without you having to re-invoke it. So it's pretty cool actually. So let's just try it out. Turn off dark mode. What's the weather in New York City? So just like that, as you can see, it just continues on and you can just talk and ask questions without having to use it again. And now let's move on into apps. First of all, we're starting with iMessage. Now on iMessage, we got a new menu right here, which in my opinion is pretty cool, way better than the old one that was on the top of the keyboard. Now what we got here are a few buttons, of course, which you can use in this case to share the location. This is really, really cool. You can share the location from here, send your contacts or location, or even request the location, which is again, pretty amazing. Now going here, we also have another feature called check-in. So you can use that to basically notify your contacts or your relatives when you arrive somewhere. It's actually pretty useful, probably for a lot of people. Going back here, we have replying to messages. Now replying to messages is pretty easy. Now you don't have to tap and hold. All you have to do is just swipe from the left to the right and you can reply to a message. If you get a voice message where someone is talking, you will actually get a transcription of that message just underneath it so you don't have to actually play it. Or if you're on an environment where you cannot play that message, you can just hear it. And when you tap and hold it, now it says right here, save, save to voice memos. So you can directly save it from here. Now this used to be before, but now the wording here has changed. Another thing you can do is tap and hold here and it shows a button where it says insert. If you tap there, you can start a scan to scan text inserted here, or you can insert a password or one of your contacts directly here on the message. Now, another really cool feature if you use group chats with iMessage is that if you left, like you just got out of the group chat and you didn't go in for a long time and you have missed some messages, it will show you a button here that will take you directly to the last message that you didn't read. 
And if you tap here and you go back to this menu, we also got stickers. This is quite a big thing for Apple, I don't know why, but you get quite a few stickers here. You can add stickers from your photos and of course from different apps. All you have to do here is just drag them. You can reply to a message or react to a message with your stickers. Moving on to photos. Now photos got some updates as well. Going into the edit section here, you can see that we have a totally new UI here. We also have new buttons at the top, which you can use to actually edit a photo or if you have edited a photo you will see right there a revert button the red revert button which actually looks pretty cool now one thing that i really like about this update on the photos app are these icons for look up here so they basically recognize what that picture is so it shows a painting here if it's an animal it will show an animal right there you can see the bird right there it's pretty cool actually so you can see how it recognizes it you tap on it and of course it shows all the details and when you're on an album you have now a much easier way to actually filter and sort your pictures if you tap here it just shows a drop down menu it doesn't take you to another page which is really cool the same happens for filters here as well now if you want to share a photo you will have now the option to export an unmodified original version of this photo which is really cool as well and another thing you can do is that if you have a photo that has a subject on it that you can actually detach that like this one right here you can actually create a sticker out of that photo which is quite big according to apple but not that interesting at all now photos also has a quite improved search now it will also recognize your pets and show them on the people's album and also you have here a button that will actually allow you to choose the share format so if i want to share here i tap right there you can see we have the formats we can choose like automatic or current which is the current format which the photo has or the most compatible one right here and of course you have the old all photos data moving to the weather app now we have a few changes here as well first of all that graphic right there especially at night time looks much much better we have a lot more modules right here when you scroll down you will have a lot more modules here which you can use and look at and another really interesting thing is that when you go to take a look at the temperature so if i go right here you can see that now it gives you the option to also take a look at the weather of the previous day on the clock app finally you can start multiple timers this is really cool we should have this feature a long time ago now what you can also do is when you create a timer you will have presets here so a lot of presets that you can choose and of course quickly start a timer the reminders app also got some pretty cool new features and it also has an interactive widget which is really awesome you can see what we have right here we have columns you can actually add columns to your reminders on iOS 17. And if you tap right there, you can manage these columns. You can add one just like that, or you can edit the old ones directly from here. Now iOS 17 and the reminder app will automatically create groceries here for you. So it will just basically use the smart engine to just like compile that reminder for you. And if you go to one of your reminders, so let's go right here to one that we have actually scheduled what we can do is set an early reminder so if we want that we can go ahead and choose one day before up to six months before or just choose our own custom time on the notes app we get that pretty cool undo and redo button right there at the top you can now add links to other notes here so just tap anywhere tap on add link and you can add the link just like that for collaborations and things like that now one really interesting thing is that you can choose here the format mono style then you can see you can create those like fields right there which you can of course use to maybe maybe distinct them something from something else and it looks actually really really awesome now once you want to continue with the other stuff you can just go ahead and do it like that on the music app we have a new mini player it has been redesigned and in my opinion it looks much better than the old one and also finally apple has added cross fading to music even though you can enable it from the settings i tried to enable it i did enable it but now the music section on the settings app it doesn't work i try to get on it it just crashes the app this is a new contact poster on ios 17. you basically create this poster you can customize it with your emoji or your picture whatever you want and this is what will show on other phones 
when you call them of course the other phones also need to be on ios 17. you can customize this customize your name something similar to like the lock screen on ios 16 something like that you can customize the name with colors and all that and you can see right here we also have a new ui on the phone calls not only a new ui it shows all the, the buttons right here at the bottom you have also here much bolder text and a smaller picture on the left side another thing here is that i button so if someone is calling you or you're calling someone you can actually tap that i button to see the contact poster and see all the information and the phone app on ios 17 also got the live voicemail which is really really cool so if you're somewhere you cannot answer a call you can just enable that feature and once someone sends you a voicemail it will just transcribe it for you so you can read it and see if if it is important or not there are new features on facetime as well on facetime now you can leave a video message just like you leave like a voicemail you can actually leave a video message on facetime on ios 17 and now you can also react with your hands so while you're talking to someone you can do like reactions like thumbs up and it will show that thumbs up animation on the screen this is the history section on safari on ios 17 and you can see we can hide and collapse the history right here based on dates this is really really cool now what you can do also have private like private tabs locked here so if we go to private you can see this is locked and if you have tabs open there no one will be able to actually open these these are protected by your face id or the passcode and also we have new view here for the group so you can easily switch between different groups and we have a different button here for groups where you can switch also between different groups and another level above groups which is actually called profiles so you can have different profiles and in each profile have different groups of tabs so you tap right there you can go ahead and switch to different profile which you can create on safari on the settings app moving on to shortcuts now first of all the shortcuts got a lot of new actions and i'm not going to talk about all of them in this video because it will take a long time i will most likely do a separate video on some of the best new shortcuts on ios 17 and this is right here the new look for the automations page and when you tap on it right here you can create an automation so let's go with time of the day and tap next and this is the new page as well so what you can do here is create a blank automation and search for any action you want or just choose one here from the shortcuts favorites or one from the apps and when you have created an automation that needs to run a shortcut you can see right here it says run after confirmation you can now tap there and just choose run immediately tap on don't ask and tap on done and you're good to go moving on to the settings app first of all when you go to your apple id you will see right here that we have new glyphs for the sections of the apple id and we have the renames here so now it says personal information right there which is really awesome and we also have here sign in security and payment and shipping now if you go under your name there you will see also communication preferences this is new as well so you can choose whether you want to get announcements apps music tv and newsletters from apple going into your subscriptions you can finally here sort your subscriptions based on app name price or renewal date there is a new icon here for the vpn there is a new icon for display and brightness home screen and library now it has changed it used to be home screen now it's home screen and library and we have a new section here for standby going into the seller settings you can now here sort by name or by size and see which app is using more data on your device on focus modes now you can choose to silence notifications you go to options tap on silence notifications and you will get this pop-up you can choose while locked or always when you go to screen time you will see a new look right here and also screen time got a really cool new feature called screen distance so if you keep your iphone close to your face for a long time it will notify you that that's bad for you and you should just move your iphone out of your face and right here on screen time you will also see app and website activity it used to be app activity now it's app and websites moving under accessibility we have the new features here so we have live speech which you can enable here you can choose your favorite phrases you can add them here and you can also choose voices 
but what's really cool is that you can add your own voice go to personal voice and here you can create your own personal voice the iphone will take a few a few through a few different steps and will take your voice and basically reply or just read anything you type there with your own voice and you can choose to share it across your devices there is also a section here for the control for the hearing control center so you will have here the ability to rearrange these or maybe remove any one of them that you might not need you will also get assistive access right here the new feature that apple has talked about you can enable it on this section and when you go here and you go to siri you will also get a slider which lets you set the siri speaking rate whether you want siri to speak faster or slower you can set it with this slider now, as I said, there is a section here for the standby mode. So when you go here, you can enable or disable the standby mode. You can also enable the always on. Now, when you go to night mode, which is the red mode that I showed you guys, you can enable or disable this and also enable motion to wake, which means that the screen will completely turn off if there is no motion in the room. If you just wake up and it notices it, it will turn off the screen. Now, we have a few different options here under Siri. First of all, the listen for hey has been changed now you don't have to say the hey word at all you can just use siri and you will also have here allow siri unlocked when your iphone is locked you enable this you can still use siri and also you can enable siri in calls so you can use siri while on a phone call or on a facetime call under privacy and security, if you go here and scroll all the way down, you will find a new section where you can enable sensitive content warning. There will be a totally new look on the password settings. You go to passwords, you will have your security recommendations here, then you have the pass password options, and then it will show you all the passwords that you have right here. Now, one really useful feature is clean up automatically. This can be found also under the password options. So when you get the keys that you use to like unlock your emails or whatever that is, it will automatically clean them from your device once you have used them. Under the settings of the calendar, we have here an option to turn on week view starts on today. So if you turn on that, the week view always starts on today. On the reminders, we talked about the grocery list. Well, you can actually reset it by going to the reminder settings and reset it directly from here. We talked about the new live voicemail feature. Well, you go to settings, phone, and you can enable it from here. On Safari, you can choose a different search engine for your private tabs. So you go to private search engine and pick any one you want. You don't have to use the same as the default tabs. Also, under Safari, what you can do is enable Face ID for those tabs, and you can do that right here. You can create the new profiles right here, tab right here, and you can customize them, add a name, and of course, an icon, and just choose where you want to place it. And finally, we're going to the camera settings. So let's just find the camera here. We have a new option to enable a leveler on the screen of your camera when you're using the camera app. And we have some rearrangements here at the top of the camera settings. So that is it for this video, guys. These are more than 130 new features of the new iOS 17. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe for more. And I will see you on the next one.